Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. So I have been getting a request for a ceruse finish. What is that? Kind of like a liming of your wood grain. And so I wanna show you guys how I did it. And I really didn't have to use a lot of products to do that. So you can take your furniture to the next level. Now, with that being said, it works the best on oak. So if you have an oak table or something like that, it will work perfect on your oak. You can recreate this finish on different wood, but oak is the best wood because when you use the wire brush, it gets into the wood grain and kind of pulls it out to make it deeper. So. Really, oak is probably the best wood for you to use on this. So, this is what it looks like. Hold on. This is what I have done. This is the bottom of my dining table, and I had it painted black, and then I stripped it all off, and I did this finish. So, check this out. When you guys go to different stores, if you're thinking like Restoration Hardware, Our House, Pottery Barn, any of those stores, those designer stores, you are paying upwards of probably $2,000 just for a table with this finish. I am gonna show you guys how to do this way cheaper and now you're gonna to wanna to do it on everything. It's a pretty hot finish right now, but it's just classic, classy, timeless, and I am super excited to teach you guys how to do it. So if you wanna see it, stay tuned. This is my dining table before. It was stained with a white wash stain on the top and painted black on the bottom, and then kids and life got a hold of it. And I thought that this would be the perfect piece to show you guys a ceruse finish. It is solid oak, there is no veneer, and so it's a really good piece to work with. The first thing that I did was strip everything off. So even if you have a piece that is not painted or you didn't stain it, you're still gonna wanna get down to the raw wood with your oak finish. And so a chemical stripper is a really good option to get a pre-existing finish off first. So the first thing I did is I used a chemical stripper, let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. And now I'm gonna use a wire brush to go around the edges of the table. I am using a wire brush because I know that this is solid oak, it is not veneer, so I'm not quite worried about you know, scratching it. This is a not super stiff wire brush, but it's gonna help get in that wood grain and get that white stain out of there. Usually I use a plastic scraper, you guys know my plastic scraper with the scoop, but I'm gonna use a metal scraper for this because I really wanna make sure I get everything off and I know that this is not veneer. Generally, when I work with veneer, I use my plastic scraper, but if I'm using solid wood or working with solid wood, I'll use my metal scraper. So that's what I'm doing is scraping off the stain from the top. Then what I did is I put another thin layer of stain and I'm going over it with a 3M pad and I'm just gonna scrub it. This is going to really get that stain off. So it was an oil-based stain. I knew this because I did this. So it was an oil-based stain that had gator hide over it. So I'm really trying to scrub that pre-existing finish off as much as I can before I go in with my sander and start sanding. I need to neutralize this chemical strippers. So I'm going to go over it with some mineral spirits, a clean 3M pad, and I'm going to just scrub the entire piece. What this is going to do is this is going to not only help open the wood grain up, but it's going to get all the residual off and it's going to neutralize my stain so that it stops the, I call it the cooking process, but it stops the activation process of the chemical stripper. I'm gonna start this with an 80 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna use my three x four electric ray. So this is where you'll wanna come in with your orbital sander or electric sander, whatever kind of sander that you have. You really wanna make sure that you get this piece down to the raw wood if you want the final look I have. Now, I will tell you that if you want it to look different, let's say that you want 
you know, a, a stain that's a little bit darker. You can do that, but you're gonna wanna do it after you sand it down. So you're gonna wanna sand it down and then you're gonna wanna stain it and then you're gonna wanna use your wire, br wire brush, which is what you'll see me do here in a couple minutes. But I'm not staining this. I'm gonna use the wood, the natural wood of this. So I'm sanding everything down. I'm going over with a fine 10 millimeter pad. So I start with an 80 grit and I do a 120 grit and then I'm gonna wipe everything off so that way my wood is raw and there's no more pre-existing finish. There's no stain, there's no top coat, nothing. So you're gonna see exactly what it looks like here in a second. I did work one side at a time so that way I could show you guys the difference. So once I'm done with this wire brush, then you're gonna see what you can expect the look to look like. So after I'm done taking off all the excess dust, we're gonna go in with a stiff wire brush. So a stainless steel wire brush that's super stiff. And what this is gonna do is this is going to go into the wood grain and it's gonna deepen the wood grain. So it's not gonna scratch the top of your finish. You need to go with the grain of the wood and you're going to just run it across the piece with the grain. It's not gonna scratch any other part. What it's gonna do is the bristles are gonna catch in that already pre-existing grain and it's going to deepen it. So you're gonna see here in a second how you can tell the difference and you can see when it's ready. So I'm just gonna go across it with this brush over and over until I am happy and it looks like you can really see the indents of the grain. Okay, so right here is what I was talking about. Once you're done, do you see right there how you can see that deepened wood grain? So over to the right, there's still the pre-existing finish. Then the middle is the grain that's deepened. And then the left, I haven't gone over it yet. So you can see over here, the left-hand side is completely done. And you can see that wood grain that I have deepened right there. And then the right side, I will do the same exact thing. And then I'm gonna move down to the skirt of the tabletop and I'm going to remove the paint. So I'm gonna use a chemical stripper, I'm going to scrape it, I'm going to neutralize it, and then I'm going to sand it. I'm gonna start with an 80 grit and do a 120 grit and then I'm going to use my wire brush on that too. So it's the same exact process that I just did on the top. Now the top has been completely stripped down and I've taken the wire brush to it. So it is ready for the next step. 
for the tabletop, I'm going to do something a little bit different than the bottom. So I'm going to show you the bottom later, but the tabletop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal it first. This is going to allow me to rub the pigment, the paint off once I put it on here in a couple minutes. So I'm just going to do a light coat of some gator hide. You don't want anything too crazy because you really don't want that poly to be filling the wood grain. You want to just kind of give it a surface that way when you put the paint on in a couple minutes, it'll be easier to wipe away. Once that layer of sealer is dried, I'm going to take the wire brush and I'm just going to go across the top of it really quickly and lightly into the wood grain just to make sure that I get any out that maybe had seeped in there. And then it will be ready for me to mix the paint that's going to go on top. People have used a bunch of different colors for a ceruse finish, but for this one, we're going to do white. So I'm using cotton from Dixie Belle, which is their whitest whitest of the white paint that they have. I'm going to add a little bit of water and I'm going to water it down slightly. That way it's easier for me to wipe it back. But I have seen spruce finishes where people have stained it black and done the white inside of it, or they've stained it white and done black in the wood grain. So there are endless possibilities. What we're doing on this is we're doing kind of like a dupe restoration hardware, our house, pottery barn look, because those tables are like $2,000. So we're doing the natural wood color with a white to just give it a rustic kind of farmhouse. I don't know, I just love this look. So now I'm going over this with a cheap chip brush with a layer of the paint, and I'm gonna go with the wood grain at first, and then I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go vertical, and then I'm gonna go horizontal. That way I know that that paint is really good and in that wood grain. Once you've applied your paint, you want to go in the opposite direction and wipe it away with a paper towel or a microfiber cloth. So I'm going in the complete opposite linear direction. So I'm going to go against the grain and I'm going to wipe it up so that way I can push that paint into the grain even more. And so you can see right here how it's starting to give a whitewash effect. If you like that whitewash effect, then you can keep it. But I don't necessarily want this to be whitewashed. I just want it to be in the grain and I really want a true ceruse finish. So I'm gonna wipe off as much of the excess paint as I possibly can. And then I'm going to take my mister bottle and I'm going to mist the surface and I'm gonna wipe it away even more. Remember, we're not going with the grain. We're gonna go against the grain when we're doing this. So that way we can really expose that natural wood, but keep that paint in the wood grain. Once you've gone against the grain to push that paint into the wood grain, that's when you can go with the grain to kind of even everything out. And so I'm going against the grain right here, but then you're gonna see me start going with the grain and I'm going to mist the area and I'm gonna start going with the grain to get that excess paint off to make it look even. So if you've got a couple areas where maybe the paint seems to have dried, don't worry about it. You can put some paint or you can put some water on your paper towel or your microfiber cloth and you can rub those areas and that will take the paint off and it'll start evening, evening out your finish. Wow. 
I worked in sections, so right here you can see that started drying a little bit, and so you just wanna miss that area or get the towel a little bit wet, and you can just rub that in, and it's going to get that excess paint or that buildup or the dried paint off. Not a big deal, don't worry about it. And then you're gonna move on to your next section. You also have the option, instead of doing this, you can take a very high grit sandpaper after you've done everything. So I didn't bother taking it off right here. So this is another option instead of wetting that paper or that towel and wiping the extra paint off is you can sand it with a very high grit sandpaper. And since that paint is already in the wood grain, you don't have to worry about it. And if you use a high enough grit, then you're gonna be able to take that excess paint that has dried off and it's gonna even out your finish. Once I'm done evening out my finish with either my wet microfiber cloth or my high grit sandpaper, and we're talking like 300 above, I go through with the high grit sandpaper, so a 300 or above, and I sand the finish down. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna smooth everything and get it ready for a sealer. Because when you take that wire brush, you are raising the grain. When you use the mineral spirits, you're raising the grain. And so it feels a little bit rough. So that's why you wanna go through after you've done everything and you wanna do a final smooth sanding with a high grit and we're talking probably 300 or above. Now I'm going to seal it with my gator hide with my blue sponge. You're not going to see streaks with this so don't worry about you know usually I use a high density foam roller but you won't see streaks with a wood finish like this. So here's the difference. We're going to move on to the legs. So I wanted you to see how I did the legs as well. So the left is painted, the right is completely done. I'm going to strip down that left leg with my chemical stripper. We're going to put it all over there and we're going to let it sit for about 15 20 minutes i'm going to take my metal scraper and i'm going to scrape it all off and then i'm going to take my wire brush more of like a brass wire brush is what i'm going to use and i'm going to scrape in all the nooks and crannies of this leg so that i can get all the excess paint off Remember, once you're done getting all the stuff off and you're done with your chemical stripper, you wanna neutralize it with mineral spirits. I am going to take steel wool, a double zero steel wool, dip it in my mineral spirits, and I'm going to scrub the bottom of this to get all the excess off. The legs of this table have a lot of nooks and crannies, but I'm gonna start with an 80 grit because I do need to get that pre-existing stain off so you can see right here and you're gonna see the difference. So again, I'm using my three x four electric ray. You can use your orbital sander, your mouse sander, whatever you have. I really, really like my, my surf prep. I try not to push products on people, but I'm telling you that is a game changer if you can invest in one. So I'm gonna use an 80 grit and then I'm gonna do a 120 grit. and. Surf Rep has this where you can use the actual foam pad and put sandpaper on there. And this is gonna allow me to get all the nooks and crannies and all of the ornate areas. And so that's another reason why I really love this sander and 
again, as a woodworker as well, it's something that I am glad I invested in and I use it all the time. All the time do I use this sander. So really it is a super great tool to have. You can always start with a entry level orbital sander, but an orbital sander is not gonna get in all these nooks and crannies. So this is something, if I didn't have the surf prep, I'd probably be sanding this by hand, or you could use a mouse sander if you have one. Once my leg is sanded down completely, I'm gonna take my wire brush and I'm gonna start deepening that wood grain. So if you have a leg like this, you may have to go in a few different directions, but just remember with that wire brush, you wanna go with the direction of the grain, whether it's going horizontal or vertical. Sometimes with oak, it goes a few different ways. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to apply a thin layer of that paint mixture that I had. And I'm gonna do something a little bit different. If you didn't notice, I didn't seal it first. I wanted to kind of test it and see what would happen. And so, I wanted to have a little bit more white on the legs and that is why I didn't seal it because I don't want everything to pull back. So you have the option and you can see right there how runny this is and how thin this layer is of paint. And you don't really, you don't want it to be full coverage. You're gonna see here in a second how you can still kind of see the wood grain through that paint and that's kind of what you want. You don't wanna be completely covering it with a full layer of paint. You just kind of want it to be a little bit thicker than a wash but not quite as thick as the paint. So you can see a little bit right there how you can see the wood grain through that. That's gonna make it easier for me. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to sand it down with a 120 grit instead of wiping it down. So there's two different techniques in this video to do this. You figure out what works for you. I took a 3M pad and I'm just gonna wipe that and expose a little bit more of that wood grain. You can tell on the legs, I left a little bit more white around the edges and that's what the look that I wanted for the legs. So you could try either way if you want. If you have a more ornate piece, this may work for you. If you've got a flatter area, I found that what I did on the top worked a little bit better for a flatter area. Once you've removed all the paint or as much as you want, or you can leave some of that white like I did, you're going to seal it. So I am sealing this with Dixie Belle's Gator Hide. I'm using my blue sponge. I'm going to put a layer of it over here and you can see it's kind of darkening that wood, which is what I wanted. So it's gonna have a nice natural look. Look at these legs. This piece seriously is super, super awesome. Okay, everybody, this table is finished. I gotta say, I feel like it's probably one of the coolest finishes that I have done. Uh, when, I put, when I put the table back together, I was blown away. Like somebody else did it. This is really a great finish if you want something different, maybe a rustic look. You can do it on any kind of wood. You just have to make sure that you are able to clean out the wood grain. That's like maybe the, that's the key thing here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay on if you wanna see some staged pictures of this, a little up close and personal. I did a little video of it around there, or I you know, took a video of it as well. Everything I use is in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next week. Remember, we are gonna have some fun, exciting things going on in August. So here's the piece. I love it. I can't wait to get my upholstery. I am going to probably, I have four chairs that go with this. They're four oak chairs. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna paint them or what I'm gonna do, but I have some fabric coming. So that'll be a video where I show you guys how to upholster and all that stuff. So. All right guys, have an awesome week and I will see you later in the next video. All right, bye.
great till you added colors.